welcome to the ride. So you like to fight, huh? Well, I've got the perfect floor for sadistic sickos like you. Now, how many of you are there? Three. Thank you. Three. Is this the first ride for any of you? Fantastic. Newcomers are always welcome. Yes, they are. And I'm sure you'll welcome the extra instructions we intend to give you during the game. May I have your name now, Player One? Thank you very much. Player Two, you are next to type in your name. Good, thank you. Player Three, may I have your name, please? Nice one, Fonzie. Player one, your buzzer is the letter Q. Q as in quiz kids. Player two, you will buzz in by pressing down on the letter B. B as in bow, wow, wow. And last but not least, player three, you will be using the letter P as in phallic. It's time for you to go off to war now, but don't worry. I'll wait for you under the apple tree. Time for the show where I culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack the Ride is sponsored by Armageddon Bible and Gun Shop, arming God's soldiers for a new self-righteous millennium. All this month, get a free prayer towel with every automatic weapon purchase of $5,000 or more. And now, here's your host, the one, the only, Cookie. Hey there, so you're a bunch of fighters, huh? You wanna fight? You wanna start with me? Cause if you do, this means war! Okay, first off, gotta give you your screws. Here's a bunch for all three of you. Now listen up, and I'm gonna tell you why I'm passing these out. The first time a question comes up that you think might be on the difficult side, buzz in immediately and start pounding on the S key. That's S for screws. You're gonna be shooting these puppies into the screen, totally annihilating the question and answers. Then you're gonna make your opponent answer the question whether they can read any of it or not. So if you're not the one pounding on the S key, you better be trying to read everything fast before it's gone. And that's Flakjack. <laughs> All right, look sharp, I'm sending you to the front line. All right, player two, buzz in, give us a value. Uh, may I say zoinks? Here's the category. War. It's got a beat and you can kill to it. So, do you like Motown music? Well, whether you do or not, I need to ask you something, okay? And, uh, this is kind of important to me. War. Huh. Good God, y'all. What is it good for? A new rebirthing, my young friend? It's what I'm loathing, death of men. Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Or historically, it's player two, it's yours. Wow, that's a great lyric. Who wrote it? Joseph Stalin? <laughs> player one, up to you, player three. In the song War, Motown artist Edwin Starr reminds us that war just isn't of much value. Well, unless it becomes your only top 40 hit, you know, then, then it does have some value. Okay, player three, hit your buzzer. Let's find out how much... I like to call this category... Thou shalt not war unless you think I told you to. Alright, you probably know the Middle East has seen more than its share of war. That's why it's called the Shot Full of Holy Land. How long did Israel's 1967 war with Egypt, Syria, and Jordan last? As long as Jesus was dead? Player 3, do it! God created everything in six days, and the Israelis and Arabs fought the Six-Day War in 1967. And on the seventh day, you know, there was just a lot of terrorism. It's up to you, boy. Coming up. Art is hell. Okay, hang tight. We're talking about $3,149 here. Here we go. If Sun Tzu's The Art of War treatise included actual artwork, which of these would be the best example of Sun Tzu's strategy for conflict resolution? Matadors torturing and killing bulls, poker playing dogs destroying cities, sad clowns prolonging battles, and definitely for big-eyed kids subduing the enemy with charm. Take a shot, player. Player 
too? Who do you want to screw? Hey, Bonehead, you just screwed yourself there. What are you checking to see if the S key works? Well, it does. War. Okay, let's see it. Supreme excellence in the art of war is subduing the enemy without fighting. So if the big-eyed kids went over the enemy with their charm, they're practicing supreme excellence. You know, instead of the usual supreme bad taste. Okay, player two, grab a question zone. We're calling this one. Memorize your line, soldier! Here we go. How can an actor returning from service in World War II describe his experience abroad and still use correct military terminology? I saw an Asian play, I took part in a French production, I attended a British show, or I went to the European theater. All yours, play. You know, it's customary for Japanese soldiers to kill themselves when they do something stupid. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. Player two, player three. Player three, make it happen. A term used to describe a specific region of fighting in a war is theater. And it has nothing to do with that guy in the foxhole who always liked to wear tights. He was just weird. Player 3, what's this one worth to you? Buzz in and choose a value. Good one, Player 3. Okay, Player 3 gets this or that here. Player 1 and 2, you get to watch. The category for this dis or dad is... The Sexy Side of War. Okay, I'm gonna name off seven locations, and for each one, you're gonna have to tell me if it's... A Civil War Battleground, or a steamy primetime TV show. If it's a Battleground from the Civil War, press 1. If it's a TV show, press 2. If you're not sure, press 4. You're gonna get some money for each right answer, and you lose cash for a wrong answer or any you don't get to. Okay, you got 30 seconds to nail all seven. When the wire fills up, you're out of time. And here we go. Ticket smell! Battleground! Dawson's Creek! Baxter Spring! Knox Landing! Maiden Place! Sheet Mountain! You missed four of them, can't be proud of that. Player three is in front. Well, let's see if you can keep it up. Player one, buzz in and choose a value for us. Okay, you got something. Here's what we're looking at. Gettysburg 90210. Well, hold on to your musket balls. Here's another Civil War question for you. If you needed to mail something to a Gettysburg address, what would you need to write on the envelope? Player one. Oh, beautiful. Gettysburg is in Pennsylvania. But don't write to Lincoln. He's, um, dead. Okay, player one, pick a winner. Here's your category. Bang, bang. Now what? Okay, if you've ever seen Schoolhouse Rock, you know that the start of the American Revolution is known as the shot heard around the world. You might also know that if you've read, uh, any book about American history. At any rate, we're too! Grab it! So it's a little harder with the fake answers there, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it would be. Maybe next time you won't buzz in so fast. Player one, hit it! No, I don't think guys named Bobby are allowed to work on Wall Street. Up to you, player three. No, the White House press conference was about Bill Clinton's blowjob heard around the world. Here's the one you wanted. When Bobby Thompson hit his shot heard around the world, he secured a 1951 World Series berth for the New York Giants, which was nothing compared to the 89 series in which the Giants experienced the earthquake scene around the clock on CNN. Player two, hit me! 
Okay, give it up for... An anti-war demonstration. And right this way, please. Which of the following would constitute a police action? Andy Gibb joining the World War II USO show, Andy Partridge entertaining Civil War heroes, Andy Summers player one. Andy Summers played guitar for the police, and the Korean War was actually a, quote, police action. Player one, it's up. Could I interest you in some roadkill? Okay, let me explain how this game works. You're gonna see different pairs that are somehow related, and you're gonna get a bunch of items that may or may not connect the pair. Buzz in if you think an item correctly joins the pair. Give you a grand if you're correct, but beware, you lose a thousand every time you're wrong. And at the end, there's going to be a bonus question worth some bonus cash. Uh, let's just say you should pay close attention to all the correct answers. Is that clear? Good. Let's hit it. Intelligent and Agent 86 Maxwell Blank. What do these two things have in common? time, what do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all brands of soda? Insects! Military adjectives! Kinds of bombs! Player three, you got it! Nice job, explosive performance. Well, for now, you are the master, Player 3. Don't let it slip away. Player 3, poke your buzzer and give us a value. The category is... Pretty sneaky, Rear Admiral. Hey, remember Battleship? You sank my battleship! <laughs> Woo, yeah, war is... it's just fun. Consider Player 2, it's yours! Oh, wouldn't you know it? You're wrong. Maybe next time you won't buzz in so damn fast. <laughs> All yours, player. The Battleship board game has battleships, cruisers, submarines, destroyers, and aircraft carriers. Of course, no one will ever sink anything of yours if you use the invisible moving around boats that I used to. Player one, you have the honors. Your category is... A kinder, gentler trained killer. Get your buzzer finger ready, here we go. 
Considering the purpose the Marine Corps traditionally served in the armed forces, what would make the most appropriate player three? Player three. Okay, player two, you're screwed. You three, huh? Let's see it. Whoa! Oh, that was nice. Player, player one. What are you doing? Keep. Three, don't take that. Give us an answer. Four, huh? A yak? Well, they often blow chunks while on leave, but... <laughs> player, player one! The turtle is a stupid idea for a mascot. But since the Marine Corps is amphibious like the turtle, okay. So with a turtle mascot, the Marines would be saying to the world, Hello, we're slow plotting and stupid. Player one, hit your buzzer and select a value. Okay, give it up for... Oh, you 812? Okay, imagine World War III breaks out. Come on, it'll be fun. If a PFC in the USMC reports a snafu to an NCO, and then the PFC goes AWOL, what will the NCO need to do ASAP? Get player two, grab it! The Marines could put out an APB, or All Points Bulletin, to find the missing PFC. I mean, you can't really blame the guy for deserting. He probably got tired of marching around in that turtle costume. Okay, Player 2, what's this one gonna be worth? Welcome to the Jack Attack. I'm gonna be throwing a bunch of words up on the screen. Buzz in when you see two items on the screen that match. Each time you're right, you make money. Each time you're wrong, you lose it. Now here's the thing. Not any two items that go together are necessarily a match. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Some gun assembly required. And remember, the match has to fit the clue. Alright, good luck. brain in your head? What were you doing? Now what do you think you're laughing at, player one? I must have seen Mortgage 50 times already, and I'm back for more! I've never personally dealt with the pain of a foreclosure, but up there on stage with the singing and the dancing, Mortgage makes it seem so real! I thought my kids' problems with ADD were something I had to hide, but it was so empowering to see that soccer mom fight. My child doesn't listen, my child cannot sleep. Doped up on Ritalin, he always makes me weep. He cannot concentrate He tries to masturbate 
I'd pay 15% plus 50 points to see Mortgage again. I mean, just think about it. Pot-smoking teens, philandering husbands, mothers addicted to painkillers. Eh, it's got everything. Mortgage is the true suburbia. It's not every day you see a couple from two different tax brackets. Suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome? Find true love. I love the tax assessor. Drive the babysitter home. Will my hand begin to roam? Can't be more than sweet 16. Don't worry, we won't be seen. My appraisal? I give it a prime rate. I'm just glad they left the ending open for a second mortgage. Mortgage, the musical everyone's talking about. Playing at a community theater near you. Who has time to cook? We don't.